Heals welcomes you to the third Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging. Heals is the largest non-governmental organization in Europe promoting and advocating scientific research into longevity and biogerontology. Thanks to generous support from our sponsors, Heals was able to organize this conference. The conference will highlight the cutting edge of knowledge in the field of biogerontology and provide a unique opportunity for researchers, government officials, biotech executives and advocates from around the world to meet, network and forge new scientific collaborations. Next speaker is Alexandra Stolzing from Leipzig University in uh, Germany and Loughborough University in the UK. So, Alexandra. Thank you very much. So, I will go right into our study design. So, we are working in animal models and we are, or I'm interested, my group is interested in cell-based therapy. So, we work with mice. Um, we are currently interested in actually what delivery method is the best, yeah? So, you can inject your cells either IV, uh, you can have intercranial, uh, because I'm very interested in uh, slowing down aging or reversing aging of the brain. You can also deliver them via the nose. Uh, we currently work in Alzheimer mice and also in Huntington mice. And we're also interested to actually see which cells are the best, because every kind of cell therapy usually only looks at one cell type. And what we wanted to do in our consortium is to look actually which cell type is the most effective and is there also a difference in the delivery uh, method used and also in the disease model used. Um, so we're currently looking at two cell types, um, at mesenchymal stem cells and we're looking at microglia cells. Um, usually our donors are young wild type donors and they're minimally or not passage at all. Um, we isolate brains and organs after four weeks, and we look at biochemistry, uh, histology, and behavior. So this is our setup. And now I step back and give you, oh yeah, uh, we will not be talking about Huntington, or, we, uh, or I'm not talking about the difference in the delivery method. So uh, we have to wait next year or so, we will be finished with the uh, study then. Mesenchymal stem cells, so why using mesenchymal stem cells? Um, they're fantastic cell type. Um, they're multipotent stem cells, uh, they do cell renewal, um, they home very well to different tissues. Um, they are usually very low in immunogenetic, so they are not rejected. Um, they are anti-inflammatory, um, they can be found in many, many different <laughs> organs, and you can use them in an allogeneic or autologous setting. For the ones not so familiar, so allogeneic means uh, you can use somebody else's stem cell, and autologous means it basically is your own stem cells. However, the problem is that um, the stem cells themselves are also subject to aging. So a quick into, um, overview of the stem cell aging. So I actually looked at um, stem cell number and stem cell potency um, with kind of age, and we, we see that both um, is, is declining. So the stem cells themselves are going down in numbers as well as in quality and they are also producing ROS, which is not only harmful for themselves, but it's also harmful for the body um, which would get these cells. So for me, it's very important to see um, that the quality of the cells used in the cell therapy is actually good. Um, I had like, before I started, I had a quick look at what is currently being done in the literature, so in preclinical testing. Can you shut down the light? So I, just presenting here some um, studies which look at um, heart diseases in animal models. And what I tried to summarize is actually um, people looking at age donor material or age of recipient, because most of the studies in regenerative medicines are using young mice, even that it's a disease model, it's young mice and young donors. And um, if I summarize this, I only found 12 studies looking at some form of aging effects. And all of them um, found that the donor age had actually a very negative effect. 
And all of the studies, and it was very, very few, it was only three reports looking at the recipient age, uh, find that if your recipient age uh, is, is, yeah, if the recipient is, is old, that also the effect size you get with the cell therapy is much lower. And now I'm come to a slide which might be controversial, but uh, for the today talks, um, I will be saying that Alzheimer is equal to aging. For me, Alzheimer, at least in the animal model, is just an accelerated aging phenotype. So this was a review from this year, actually showing um, what the field, the Alzheimer field thinks aging is, uh, Alzheimer is, and they say it's aging, oxidative stress, inflammation, and in some cases also head injury. And I would say all of that together is just aging. So there's nothing special um, about Alzheimer really. So when we do cell therapy, the first thing you have to really show to convince people um, what you're doing has any meaning is that you have to track the cells. So what we do is we do um, use uh, either GFP mice as donor or male into female transplantation. And this is such a male into female um, transplantation setup. And what you see here is that we use young MSCs uh, and we transplanted them into young or aged mice and you already see what effect the age of the mice has because you only get that one signal here in the brain where we find the MSCs. So apparently all the other young, um, young mesenchymal stem cells are lost. Um, it's very normal that this was an IV injection that you find MSCs in all of these different organs. So it's a very normal picture. It's just that normally people are not doing it in aged mice. If you then go one step further and you use aged MSCs, and aged MSCs means 12 months old mice, which is barely middle aged. It's not really a very old mouse. You already see, uh, again, you're losing all the signal. So nothing goes in the brain anymore. And also the other organs are not having a lot of cells. So the cells seem to not be able to engraft or being killed or being kind of phagocytosed much more quickly. Uh, luckily, uh, if you have an accelerated aging model, the Alzheimer model, you get actually much more cells in the brain. And for a while we were very surprised. So why do we have more MSCs? We didn't do anything with them. But then if you look at signals attracting uh, mesenchymal stem cells, so this is MCP1, and it's a chemokine attractant molecule which guides um, MSCs um, to the brain. And we find that for the cortex, we actually have more signal in the old, but even much more in the, um, in the Alzheimer model. So it seems that there is simply more attraction signal in the animal which attracts the cells to the brain, which is actually beneficial because it shows the cells go where the damage is. Um, are the cells just swimming around in the vascular system of the brain or are they actually going right into the tissue was the next question we had. And here's a picture showing this time GFP MSCs and you see little dots everywhere and also if you zoom in you find them. So this is a microglia plaque kind of like where you have like um, amyloid accumulating and you see they go right into these plaques where there is a lot of inflammation and you see them everywhere in the brain. So what is in terms of histology or pathology? Um, here this is amyloid plaques which we looked at uh, to see if there's a reduction in, in the plaque load. And what we did is we um, counted the amount of small, middle size and large plaques because what you find is that you actually have an increase after the MSC transplantation in the number of small plaque, which you would say, oh, that's bad or not. But you have also a reduction of the middle size. So apparently the MSCs start degrading material, but they can't get rid of it. What you also have to keep in mind is that this um, Alzheimer model is constantly producing amyloid. So it's highly overexpressed. It's meant to make um, amyloid. So it's not surprising that we can't get rid of all of it. And this is four weeks and one dose of MSCs. Um, if you look at other figures uh, or other pathologies, is here it's microglia activation. Microglia are the inflammatory cells in the brain. They're actually part of the inflammatory um, circuit. And if you look at young and old and AD material, you actually see more and more of these kind of clusters of microglia. They're bigger cells and they're highly activated. So if you then go and count them and you count the microglia number, 
you see that after MSC transplantation, you have just a tiny bit of reduction in the overall number, but you have a massive reduction in actually the activation state of the cells. So we're not boosting microglial cells in numbers, but we're reducing their pro-inflammatory phenotype, which is again part of, of aging. So we're reducing inflammation. Um, I quickly go back here to the aging model. So with all of these tests, we did also aged match controls, which were not Alzheimer. And we, I'm just showing here old mice uh, controls. You see kind of the same clusters appearing. And we had here young microglia and old microglia transplanted. I will go back to the microglia in a bit of a minute. Um, and you see that the cluster sizes are also reduced. So even old microglia, old donor cells, um, are still kind of like doing it a bit, but basically you're losing the activity of the cells. If you look at another pathology in, in Alzheimer or in aging, it's astrocyte activation. Um, if you quantify it, you see again after seven and also after four weeks, um, you have a reduction in the cortex and in the hippocampus, so all very nice. If you look at uh, inflammation signals, attracting cells, I already mentioned MCP1, but CCR5 is another such attraction molecule for inflammation cells, it's going down. So you kind of stop the cycle of inflammation. And if you look locally at classical markers of inflammation, TNF-alpha and IL-6, both are significantly down-regulated. If you look at neuronal support, so we take NGF as a marker, it's also um, changed. NGF is actually good to be suppressed because it sometimes leads to unwanted uh, neuronal um, growth, and that's not good. If you look, okay, this is all data, it's all pathology, it's all markers. Um, what is really important for all of us is actually kind of behavioral improvement. And that's why we did the memory test. So we had like a simple t-test. So the mice simply get trained on, on the maze and there is always one, um, one direction which is the right choice. So they have just a simple choice, right or left. They get tried, trained and then we retest them um, after the transplantation. And here you see with the MSCs, after one week, two weeks, three weeks, and four weeks after the transplantation, that they showed um, an improvement in the correct choice. And then you have the PBS controls, which are bad, and their memory is declining, and they can't uh, memorize what the right choice is. So I said we're comparing MSCs and microglia cells, so I wanted to quickly also show a bit of the data with the microglia and explain a little bit why microglia cells. Um, so microglia are the macrophages of the brain. They're also part of the inflammation system. But there has also been description that macrophages can be anti-inflammatory and kind of regulatory repair macrophages. And what we did is we made uh, microglia cells actually from the bone marrow, or again, from young donors. And these are just all microglia markers showing they have the phenotype. They also have the morphology of microglia cells. Um, if we track them, again, you see the same pictures, that if you have H cells, you don't have any uh, kind of cells arriving in the brain, um, and you also have low levels in, in an aged environment. Um, however, <coughs> if you use young microglia cells in an AD model, uh, you, s uh, you have also an improvement in the behavior. So you see here, in comparison to the MSCs, you have a much bigger response. So microglia seem to, if I compare them to, to MSCs, to seem to be making a better benefit uh, in behavioral, um, in, in short-term memory. However, what you also see is that the benefit is declining much quicker. So this is kind of the dynamics we want to try to tease out of the study is, is like what cells has the better effect, how long does the effect last. So if you kind of imagine this to be a therapy, you would see that microglia are more active, but you would have to repeat it more often if you want to have like a stable response. So to summarize that, I hope I could show you that transplanted MSCs or microglia can be found in brains of young and Alzheimer mice, that they show some beneficial effect on Alzheimer associated pathology, mostly amyloid plaque size, microglia activation, astrocyte activation, that they reduce expression of pro-inflammatory factors, support neurons, and improve short-term memory. 
This was all funded by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, actually under a program of reducing animal harm, not actually as a therapy. And these are the team members in Leipzig, and that's my cooperation partner. Uh, Luzin uh, provided the mice for the Alzheimer model, and Hoa is working on the hunting model. Before I stop, um, quickly, um, this was a crowdfunding campaign as many of the donors are actually in the room. Thank you very much for trusting me with this uh, activity. It's a lifespan test for senolytic compounds. Um, as I said, many of the donors are actually in the, in the audience and also the team members which did all the work, created the website, um, uh, approached uh, donors and everything. Uh, they're also sitting uh, partly in the audience. If you want to follow our project, please visit our website. We will keep you up to date with what the cells are doing, uh, not what the cells, what the mice are doing. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, free giveaways is, we actually plan to collect all the organs, but we will not be able to analyze all the organs. So if somebody is interested in effects of senolytic compounds on the heart, the liver, muscle, please contact us. We are happy to share whatever we get out in terms of organs. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Solzing. So now we have time for questions. So if anyone has a question, yes. There are a couple of things that you said during the, your presentation that uh, are answers from uh, uh, questions that we had in the first uh, EHA meeting. Uh, one of them was uh, uh, whether the medicinal stem cells they uh, found, find their way through the body uh, to the damage. Uh, so um, uh, one of the reasons why the question was asked is that based on the few experiments uh, reported, it could be that uh, producing damage before introducing them is a, a way to uh, improve their, um, their way to restore health. Um, so would that be a possible uh, future uh, uh, research axis for you, or how far are there other uh, um, other teams in the world uh, right now being on, on that? I'm not aware that anybody is introducing a damage, kind of like a bone marrow irradiation, a mild irradiation to kind of open up the stem cell niche and also to induce like low level of damage signals. I'm not aware that anybody is doing it, but I, co I would consider it. Like it might be an interesting question if that is really beneficial, or if you're introducing too much harm and the, it doesn't matter where the cells are. Maybe it's also okay that they're not homing into the damaged area, but are just around to manipulate um, paracrine effects. It's, nobody has done it, so. So actually, so I see some heads going like that. Uh, actually, uh, in, I think it was in Texas, in St. Anton, yes. Uh, Dr. Lipping and his team they have ir irradiated, but mildly irradiated, very mildly ir irradiated. Um, it was mice, yes, uh, and introduced uh, mesenchymal stem cells. Um, they did it with either old or young mesenchymal stem cells, and it, in, it uh, increased the lifespan of the mice, and uh, especially if it was young uh, mesenchymal stem cells. So it's all very aligned, and it seems it's quite a big effect. Okay, thank you. Is there any other question? Yes. Uh, yes, very intriguing findings. Uh, my question concerns, is inflammation cause or consequence? Can you, with anti-inflammatory uh, agents, uh, also achieve the same effect? Because as it seems, the young mesenchymal stem cells are less inflammatory prone or less sensitive to inflammatory signals or so the inflama inflammatory uh, inter is, is an intermediate maybe in your, in, 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 in your findings? I, I wouldn't say that inflammation is the only thing. The MSCs are manipulating. It's just that that was the first thing we were looking at. I think the MSCs are doing much more. We already know that they, for example, are changing phagocytosis activity without changing 
kind of inflammation status of the cells. And also they are supporting neurogenesis and other things. So it's not inflammation alone. Um, otherwise, all the studies in AD with anti-inflammatory substances would have been positive. So it's not the only answer. They will be doing other things. But it seems that inflammation is involved in attracting them and guiding them. Yeah. But then still, would you expect a beneficial effect of, even though not as pronounced, because other factors are involved as well, but would you expect an, an anti-inflammatory um, agent to improve? As I haven't done it myself, I, I can only guess. From the literature, it seems to sometimes improve, but not really significantly. Okay. Thank you.